Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new flea market toy hunting video. I just decided to film in another like direction here. Um, my desk is currently full covered with stuff so it was like easier to do it here and it's not that much stuff. I decided even to put like two days together. Um, one weekend it was a Sunday with one flea market and the other weekend was a Saturday with one small flea market and it's really not a huge haul but um, yeah so let's just start This. this is, I think, the last one of the G2 McDonald's, European McDonald's toys that I don't have. That's good. Oh, look at that. This vendor, she just told me she's also collecting 80s, 90s stuff. So, and these are her doubles. Sometimes also blue box. But I don't need that. Look at that! These are not my colors. These are two primary colors, but like, oh, so cute. What what's in here? Aww. Oh, cute! A G3, my little pony tote bag. Oh, I want that. That's so so cute. Ah. I think this goes to the pony, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh. Alf. And Garfield. And what is behind here? Okay, I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is that? Weird. A jungle book, and Lion King. <laughs> Snow White. Ninety strawberry shortcake. Um, I think the very first thing that I, I don't know if it was also the first thing that I filmed or if it was just the first thing that I <laughs> saw and bought were these things. Yeah, this um, seller, she is a really, really cool woman. She um, is a toy collector herself. Her main uh, focus is Polly Pocket, but in general she says 90s, she's a 90s gal. Um, and uh, she had just like sorted out a couple of things, her doubles or stuff that she's not too much into anymore. She, I think she's very heavy also into like 90s McDonald's toys. Um, so it was just a hodgepodge of things and I picked out this G2 My Little Pony set that I didn't have and this G3 My Little Pony tote bag. <laughs> um, so yeah, there were Generation 2 My Little Ponies uh, at McDonald's back then. That one here is from 1999, I think um, in 1998. Um, so this is the European set from uh, like four different little ponies that came always with one playset thing. Uh, in the US uh, the set looked different, they, they were just different ponies, I don't know, probably 
McDonald's Europe and McDonald's uh, US or something is a different corporation or I don't know how that works because I also noticed some of the McDonald's Barbies from that era or even earlier look a little different in Europe and then in uh, America but yeah no this is actually um, the European set there were four ponies and every pony as a set came with one um, play thingy uh, th this one here is um, Sun Sparkle, I'm not that good with the <laughs> G2 names, uh, Sun Sparkle with a hot air balloon. So uh, these are like hard plastic ponies but have a brushable tail and mane and even have the uh, G2 typical glittery eyes so they have a little gem in their eyes. Uh, this one has a movement in the neck so it can look up and down. This one is in really good condition. I, I think she just unpacked it out of the you know plastic wrapper and did nothing with it because these obviously they have polypropylene tails and manes and once children start playing or brushing them they, they, they don't look good and this one looks just perfect and this is also super clean. It's just a plastic hot air balloon. You can um, open up the back. There's a little um, door and then you can do -do -do -do, put the pony inside. It fits perfectly. Close the door and then the pony is in the hot air balloon. This was the last set that I did not have. I neither had the pony nor the balloon. Now I have all four sets. Maybe I just grab them because they're right behind me. Oh no, not, not, I don't grab all of them, but for example, here is another one. This came with this um, like castle door. So it was always kind of, um, and they were actually really good. I mean, look how, how much like details they have and all of that. So they were actually really good McDonald's toys back then. Oh, the others are a little bit high and I'm afraid they will fall down. Um, but yeah, four of these sets. <laughs> um, she had them priced for like every piece in this box for 50 cents. So this was then one euro because you know it's two pieces. <laughs> and um, super happy with that. Just look at the colors. It's just fun. It's just, you know, 90s McDonald's goodness because I don't know, I'm, I'm not really a huge, huge McDonald's um, toy fan, but if it's ponies, yeah, I like it. Uh, and yeah, I grabbed this. And when I grabbed it, oh cool, G3, um, my little pony um, tote bag. And when I came home, I was like, is this even self-made? I think so. Because if I look inside here, um, this is the kind of a stitching that just people at home, when they just have a home sewing machine, are doing. This is not really like done with a serger or anything, and how the rest is sewn. It's not, it's not bad, like or, or a bad quality how the sewing was done. But I can see that this is not factory. And uh, I think this probably used to be a, a G3. Um, bed sheet set or something, something from, from bedding because uh, often like there, there were like the, the cushions or the, the pillow size things uh, had had one big picture and then the rest uh, maybe had, had just one of those patterns on it. So I would guess this was probably made, of, made out of like bed sheets or something. Um, I really like it, such a fun color. Uh, the size is not really my favorite, I would prefer it to be longer, but I mean, I probably will use it. It's very cute. Mm, what is this? Nope, Steffi love. Oh, that's very interesting. 
That's an American controller for the SNES. Like, wow, okay. Why is that here? Oh. Because <laughs> in Europe we have them not with the purple buttons, we have them with rainbow color buttons. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is a sweet secret. I've never in my life had one in my hands. Oh my god. I think this is an older sailor Mercure? No, what's her name? <laughs> an older sailor one figure. <laughs> I'm really bad with Sailor Moon, I'm very sorry. Oh my god, look what he also had! It was like underneath these, these knee protectors. This is from a uh, Sky Dancers. Oh my god, I think I have, I might have the matching base to that one. I can't believe my luck. Um, all together to Euro. <laughs> Out of this like box where I was not expecting anything because it just looked like a bunch of I don't know UI like you know Kinder Surprise egg thingies or like I don't know whatever. I picked out these two. And then on the table of the guy, which it was under gloves, that I did not see it. He was like, oh, by the way, here's more. I was like, oh, what a crazy good find. Um, this is just a little Sailor Moon figure. Here we have a Sweet Secrets and here we have a Sky Dancers figure. So let's go through them. Let's start with the probably least exciting thing, but I still decided to pick it up. It is a a little Sailor Mercury, uh, you know, PVC figurine. Uh, definitely old, definitely vintage 90s. I think this says even 1995. And ooh, yeah, it is from this um, from this new Ray novelty toy line uh, because it says 1995 new Ray novelty made in China. It's super small, you probably cannot read that. Um, and new rain novelty, I sometimes stumble upon uh, combs or brushes that have this also uh, put in and also some little dolls, they are pretty ugly, they have these play sets, but other than that I have never heard of that toy producer, but apparently they did these little chibi style uh, Sailor Moon figures in the 90s and 1995 seems to be very early for me to be quite honest to be really sold here I mean but if it has a 1995 stamp maybe it was sold in 1996 and I definitely remember Sailor Moon was running already in the um, on uh, TV programs on the open I don't know what it's called öffentlich rechtliche like on RRD or ZDF in Germany very early on like I was still in grade one or two so it must have been 1995 or 1996 when Sailor Moon was already running in Germany before it went over to RTL 2 etc um, but so it, it, it's possible that it's really from that time it's very early I'm not a huge Sailor Moon fan I never watched it I it's, it's strange it seems that it would have been something that I really enjoy but 
um, everyone around me was like always hating on it and I was, was like oh they're so ugly and they always cry and it's so stupid so so hearing that from everyone it was like why would I want to watch it <laughs> so I was not really interested in watching it um, and then when I got into actually anime and manga and stuff it was not really airing anymore <laughs> and uh, when I decided to oh actually Sailor Moon something everyone loves around me that is into anime and cosplay and manga and blah 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 let's maybe just start watching it and I started watching it and I started even reading the reruns of the manga uh, series I didn't like it so I think I tried to get into it when I was already too old for it I should have gotten into it at that age so when I was like I don't know six seven eight years old but I didn't but I still decided to grab it because it's it's a very cute thing it looks vintage and it's small better than the huge dolls although I would probably now also pick some of them up because I have a couple of the dresses so I don't know um, but yeah the more exciting find to me at that moment was actually this this is something that I like never in a million years expected to find at the flea market it's a sweet secret doll and I remember when I did my Q&A like one and a half years ago whenever that was people asked me hey are you actually uh, like uh, interested in little secrets uh, <laughs> sweet secrets sorry why is these secrets little and ah uh, no sweet secrets um, are you collecting them no because I never see them I mean maybe if I would just tr search for them online they would come up but I doubt that they are very easily available here in Germany I even asked my uh, friend Cotton Candy Kittens who is a, an ever like she goes to flea markets since I don't know like for for about 10 years probably and um, and even she said yeah she has found one once in all these 10 years that she goes to flea markets so I guess they're really not that easy to come by they are these little dolls that are kind of transformery like <laughs> so they are girls transformers you could say they're made by Galoop um, if from the 80s on until the early 90s let me check on the correct dates again um, 85 until the mid 90s while in the mid 90s especially i think in europe they weren't produced by galoop anymore but by blue box not bluebird blue box but let me show you what she can do so in general she has this little uh, round belly body just little tiny feet hands and this head that had has like um like one strand of hair which actually yeah, you could pull here and then this would get shorter so it's really one strand of hair that goes through the head i experienced that while i was washing it and combing it through um, it is i think polypropylene hair so not really good quality but i managed to to give it cute um, curls again so that's fine but what how is she transforming yeah um, she opens up like this then you can put all of her attributes inside so you fold the hands inside um, I never remember if it's first the head or first the shoes. I think first the head. Yeah, it's not that easy with the with the hair because it's a little bit more voluminous than I would like it to be. And you can close it up, and then it is more like a little um, compact. So you don't see that it's a doll. It is just this little thingy. A compact design which it could be I don't know a magical girl item transforming or it could be just a powder or like you know makeup stuff or whatever it's cute and um, then you can open it up and um, it reveals the little doll Ta-da! <laughs> um, they were available within so many different ways. I mean, this is the typical way. This is the like basic. You have one round compact thingy, 
uh, with all sorts of different like patterns here this is now like a flower but this color even with this head was also available in I don't know a diamond shape or like a I don't know like a teardrop shape or whatever all, all the, all, although the different the same color was also different with different designs available um, and they they also had names this one is called um, Starbeam and it seems to be from the second series there were so many series um, um, the same one was also released like by Galoop and by blue box toys or blue box later on and this is the face by blue box so the uh, they are variants from directly from Galoop they they have different eyes the eyes are shaped a tiny bit different might have different colors so this one by Galoop has uh, I think blue eyes while the shape here is different it has purple eyes so uh, I can definitely tell that that one probably was released by a blue box later on than the directly by by the loop ones although it has the uh, galoop thingy uh, it says sweet secrets licensed under us blah 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 copyright by l and s made in china whatever but it's not a knockoff or anything it is a real it's a real one it's the one by blue box although it doesn't say blue box on it but it has had the license to do it uh, there were also tinier ones or ones that you you know i don't know that looked like a bottle or like a i don't know like more like like makeup things or, or whatever uh, by the way i did not really tell you that it has a little clip at the back and every one of these sweet secret dolls uh, came with um, a hair clip that you could clip this on and then you could you put it on your hair most likely when it's not a doll most likely you would put it in your hair when it's just this little uh, compact thing or with a necklace so with a necklace and a hair clip that you could clip it on but yeah I don't know where they may be not really sold here or just later on like 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 this by blue box and the original galoop ones not or I don't know they are really sweet uh, they are small and um, uh, I would definitely always pick them up if I find one of them it's still not something that I will go out of my way pick I'm picking up online probably but um, super I was so stoked when I found this and then I even found something that's maybe even better <laughs> uh, this is a sky dancers little figure you will notice it is not one of the dolls you know human dolls with hair and it's a smaller one um, <laughs> and I, I try to find out which one this is and it seems to be that it's one even from a special set uh, definitely one of the fairy flyers so maybe let's start in general if because like if you're not super familiar with this toy line I'm not even that familiar with the toy line either uh, because I it's also a toy line that I don't really find very much uh, here uh, you can find them and my friend even told me they were sold here because um, she had one as a child but like my other friend Kirshu she told me she also had one but she got it from uh, her relatives from Canada so I don't know if I my guess is they were just not widely available here um, it's always one doll that has some kind of wings and a launcher where you would put it on you know and then there was this little pull string and it would start to turn and spin and woo, it would fly away I'm not doing it and it's not working that well um, at one point I think they were produced by also by Galoop strangely enough the same company that I was just talking about and um, from 1994 up until like uh, the 2000s so they're not even that old I mean a lot of stuff that's from the 80s is not that available at flea markets anymore but that's not even such a toy line it's a 90s it's a prime 90s toy line and um, after that I mean they, they had an issue they were recalled because you know they caused some damage uh, some kids got injured because of this thing you know it flies off and then blah and some kids maybe I don't know had, like um, were injured uh, in the eyes or wherever so they were recalled at one point in the early 2000s but I don't know how that exactly went because I know that even in the mid 2000s or whatever other toy lines even picked it up again and they 
produce them again and it, they this style this sky dancers thing has been picked up by other toy lines or also was just like kind of the the license went to other toy manufacturers and sky dancers have been around since now so I don't know I think the newest thing that comes to my mind is even that LOL uh, had a very similar function with with a little tots which also could then fly um, yeah this one as I said is a fairy flyers which means you can see it's not a not there's an animal face I think this is a little bunny to me it also looks a little bit like a puppy but I think it is the bunny uh, these are supposed to be the ears but there were also horses <laughs> that, that had more like a horse face that were also smaller and there were also some smaller dolls and this one I think it's kind of crazy goes to exactly this laundry I did not find the laundry at the flea market this one I found at a convention like in 2022 um, and I bought it without any dolls also this small one so these are all from the fairy flyers they are the smaller ones the other ones are a little bit bigger they have bigger dolls dolls that have hair um, and it seems to me that this one comes from a special set um, fairy flyers uh, ba, 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 special edition twin pack circus fun I think <laughs> um, and it came with uh, two dolls so I think one doll and this bunny doll and uh, this launcher although the one that I see on photos actually has uh, in this same color here um, also this lower thing painted here so this would also be painted in this to me it looks like this but this one is the exact size so the bigger dolls you cannot put on the small launchers so to me it is like this is the matching one um, I tried it but it's actually not flying really well so yeah mm, it, it won't I don't know um, I'm not forcing it it looks beautiful I don't want to <laughs> break anything here um, it is probably from more than later, like late night. Not that super late, but it's definitely not one of the earliest ones. Uh, the earliest ones were the normal launchers, the bigger ones, etc. So this might be, I don't, I don't have a date for this, but this might be from, I don't know, 1997 or something like that. So that's what I guess. If someone is more knowledgeable with um, the Galoop Sky Dancers, uh, absolutely tell me in the comments down below because it's not my the my like my knowledge is very limited here did I write anything else down ba, ba, ba. no that's actually it what I can tell you um the crazy thing is after that I I met one of you again at the flea market at Victoria I don't know if you uh, she's, she said she's watching very often, but she's probably not watching every single one of my videos. So I don't know. Hello, if you're watching that. <laughs> Super nice uh, to meet you at the flea market. I have met her twice already. And she was like, when we shared what we had found, etc. She was like kind of jealous that I found this because she was apparently more of a sky dancers um, collector than me. But for, to, I like, and, and she actually, I will insert the clip now. She actually found a, a Polly Pocket. Okay guys, uh, this is Victoria. She, she doesn't want to have her fil face filmed, but I met her once before and I mean, look at that amazing coat. But look at, ah, she found a Polly Pocket here. She found it for 1 euro 50 and like, it's in such good condition. Like, I really missed out on that, but like, okay, it's hers. I mean, one doll, I think it's a, is it called Hollywood Hotel? It's something with hotel because this is the guy carrying the suitcases there. I don't even have that one so like arr, I missed it but I found other great stuff so thank you um, so it was I was kind of thinking in that moment should I should we swap should we just like I give you this and I get the poly pocket but to be quite honest I was pretty sure that one of these launchers could be the original one to this and I mean I have found poly pockets I can probably get go online and buy the Hollywood star Hollywood Hotel I think it's called um, but I will probably not easily find this one so I'm so happy to to be able to to have this now in my collection uh, one of the fairy flyers special edition little bunny uh, dolls
Okay, I think this is the place where last time at this flea market I found the huge lot of Barbies and she is still there. It's she is still here. This is um, a Hispanic Barbie. And I do have her, I even have her dressed twice. So and the crazy thing is she is a midge. A midge, not midge, but like Barbie and the rockers diva. But it's not the correct body, it's just the face, it's just her head, it's on a on the wrong body. Yeah. I mean, and I cannot really tell if this is the one that I have, if this is... No, it's the one that I have. I, I do have this one, I remember. Because obviously there's two waves of Barbie and the Rockers, but I think the second wave diva has less eye makeup. And other than that, there is nothing like 90s or 80s here, from what I see. All Barbies are more like 2000s and 2010s. Some fashions might be, I'm not too sure. Because I think this top could be something. And this one. <laughs> and yeah, they are the uh, three My Little Ponies, but I have both of them. I have both of them. So they are both these strawberry girlies, so I guess they came in a pack. <sighs> I might get over there again. Because uh, some mycene. She's pretty cute. And some brats. Brats, like, I don't know, kids? Are they called brats? Kids? Yeah. And some more brats over there. And obviously, Monster High. She's another brats. Ooh. She fell. Cute. Cute, 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 cute. And yeah, here are the G3s, but like I do have both of them. Unfortunately, I have both of them. And here are two of the Betty Spaghetti McDonald's girls. I don't want them. I, I have this, this one that's enough for me. So I'm like, uh, I don't know. Okay, a couple of toy boxes. What do we have there? A no, not a real pony. It looks surprisingly realistic, like a G3, but no, it's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, these boxes, they, 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 they was, would always be the chance, but mostly when you already see a fakie, there's just fakies in there and some other stuff. But, you know, oh, uh, McDonald's um, pony. I don't know. <laughs> Lots of random stuff. Don't even know what I can tell you about this. But there was, I think, another box to the right. Yeah. Which, oh yeah, this is actually a Barbie piece from the early 80s. It's one of those boutique um, like displays. I have found it already at the flea market. Also here, I will not pick it up because I have no space for it. Yay! I bought this. She has Little Miss makeup. I'm pretty sure. And she not in the best condition but she was two euro and I have her dress I don't have her tights so I don't have a complete dress but good find good find because I always thought like when I find her now I'm gonna pick her up
Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did pick up this uh, Lil Miss makeup. I, it, it, to me, it's not the craziest find or anything. I'm not super crazy about this doll, um, but I figured I, I do have a lot of the Lil Miss dolls already. Um, most of them I do like more than this. Uh, her face to me is not as special, her feature, but, but it was the very first Little Miss doll, so, so why not? And I did have part of her outfit, so it was fine and she was just two euro or something, or three, or no, two I think. Um, so yeah, Little Miss is this doll line, like toddler size dolls uh, from, um, by, like, by Mattel. Uh, from 1998 up until 1994 I think produced this was the very first one Little Miss Makeup her feature was uh, apart from that she is kind of this doll and nice hair etc um, that she that you could use hot and cold uh, water to make her makeup appear and disappear I tried it it doesn't work anymore I tried it with super cold like even put her in the fridge and then with super hot things and it, it, it's it's not working anymore um you could make appear i think um like eyeshadow uh the eyebrows would get darker like lipstick blush then on her cheek you can still see that a little bit um a little like beauty mark a heart would appear i think earrings would appear and nail polish would appear uh, the nail polish you can see it a little bit still uh, the rest is really just faded out and i'm kind of even uh thinking about just painting a little bit of like more of blush and and eyeshadow and this little heart again because it's not it's not working anymore this feature um then it would maybe her face would be maybe a to me a little bit more interesting because right now it looks just very plain but she has these little stars in her eyes and uh, her hair is in fine condition i never really know what what type of hair this is i mean it's mattel so i would guess why are, aren't they you weren't they using the same hair as uh, barbie hair at that point which would have been either saran or canacalon but this isn't i mean it's definitely not canacalon but it's it doesn't like saran it i my guess is that that is actually nylon hair um a little rough already you know with pony hair even also some nylon some some g1 pony hair is also a little rough at one point but because it does not feel like polypropylene but whatever there's some i mean she has some waves here that i couldn't get out it's because you know some of the hair is shorter but it's not cut it's more like you know a normal hairstyle some some layers in the hair um, yeah I did have this uh, outfit piece here but she is definitely not complete with it um, and um, these like little panties she was wearing and I guess these could be her original ones uh, because these also have this nice material the rest that she was wearing was just some homemade thing which I already threw away I'm sorry but like yeah um, so what she definitely and desperately needs is her little bodysuit Mm, she would have a bodysuit with long legs and with little, you know, underneath her little dress and uh, little ruffles would com come out under, uh, like, on her shoulders here. So um, that would make her way more complete, I mean, and shoes. I never, ever have shoes for my little Miss dolls. <laughs> I've never found one. And I'm also not very positive that I will ever find this little jumpsuit thingy because it's I, I tried to re, like search it online but it's like i don't know little miss fashions apart from the fashion packs that you can even still buy some like in boxes for not that much um just the fashions itself not that easy and also this is um i mean i guess this is the german doll <laughs> yeah, from germany um but no this outfit definitely is a german version because the us version actually and i don't know maybe also other european countries um, had a blue little jumpsuit and had a light pink dress but the German it specifically says German uh, online if I look it up has this little dress here in white and then a light pink jumpsuit so I needed a light pink technically <laughs> um, yeah little miss makeup let's see if I can find a spot in my like where I have all my bigger dolls with my you know PJ Sparkles and Little Miss etc. It's pretty crowded but maybe I can fit 
fit one more in there. So not the, not the best find, not the worst find, uh, but I knew that at one point when I uh, find one, I will pick it up um, like since I found this uh, outfit piece separately. And yeah, she also has this strange thing where um, her bangs are rooted behind uh, most of the rest of her hair. So the long hair is mostly rooted from the, from the front here. And then the bangs comes from behind, which if you have one of those dolls, sometimes even Barbies have that, don't, when you wash the hair, don't brush everything to the back because it will be horribly difficult to sort out the bangs again. Um, I don't know why they rooted it like this. I also have a um, uh, one of my um, uh, PJ Sparkles Twinkles, so the one with the soft body. She also has this type of like where the, the bangs is rooted and I have a couple of skippers. It is so difficult because then you have to use like single hairs in between the long hair that goes to the back to put it to the front. So my advice is if you see that your doll is rooted like this and if you wash the hair, don't just brush everything to the back. It will be difficult to sort out the bang situation again. I had quite a lot of work with that. Um, that was just the first day. So, or, or this one day where I decided I just go to, to, to this one flea market, by the way, Schönefeld, um, just to have a look. Um, and I found all these neat little thingies. So that's that's super cool. Um, and But I want to put it together with the next weekend, the Saturday, not the Sunday. That will be a different video. But next weekend, the Saturday, there was also another, it was called a children's flea market happening somewhat in my area, um, like kind of outside of Berlin, so not Berlin anymore. And it's, I decided to go there. It was also an indoors uh, little flea market. It was actually pretty nice size, pretty big, but really nothing to be found apart from this one vendor. So this is the building in which the flea market took place. And it's a really like nice area. I think it's often used for like events like this. Um, still, <laughs> I don't know why there was really almost nothing to be found. I mean, and I started to uh, let, let's film at least something here. Uh, the big T-Rex and uh, this was, I think, a uh, fashion style G4 pony, the big T-Rex from Cave Club there and one doll. But I see this very often and it's too big for me, so I will never pick it up. Uh, and here is actually the uh, seller that I already uh, teased. This is what I first saw. So sure. <laughs> uh, some loose uh, Star Wars figures, always, uh, always up right up my alley, um, because like this is even like the era, the era that I like to collect. It's the Clone Wars, it's uh, Rebels, it's the prequels, and I'm definitely interested in these three uh, clone troopers. I'm gonna build up my clone army. Um, the others I uh, mostly had, and then I noticed that there's a big tub of. Um, Pokemon plush. Lots of them are. Lots of them are the vintage ones. Uh, some newer ones in there. Uh, but I'm always now looking for um, yeah these types. So the small beanbag ones that are from the late uh, 90s and early 2000s, which I had as a child. For example, this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the Pikachu I had. So there's still always some Pokemon that I never had, and sometimes I like to pick them up. So also same uh, seller here he pulled out another tub with some trolls and some i think like um, action figures this one's quite cute i'm never really into trolls but i mean sometimes i am so <laughs> it depends on the troll yeah some wrestlers um and some other random action figures another troll that i'm like mm, maybe so not sure what uh, all of the other figures in there are. This is a, wasn't that Fievel? <laughs> I think so. Um, then he told me, yeah, I actually also have a tub of dolls. Um, not from him, this was probably like from his niece or whatever he said. Uh, some Monster High and some like more modern Barbies, modern like, I don't know, 2010s maybe. Also Steffi Loves and um, I don't know, really not my area, no, no not my era, <laughs> random baby. Um, also the accessories and the fashions, nothing for me. Um, 
quite interesting a Barbie on a model muse body. Not sure what she initially was. Um, and another, ah oh yeah, this is an Elsa, you know, you always find it in those boxes. <laughs> Some Anna and Elsa. And this lady was picking up these uh, Monster High dolls. She was quite happy with them. So why not? I think one was even missing the hands, but whatsoever. Um, and then he pulled out more boxes. This time with uh, lots and lots of carded Star Wars figures. Um, not vintage. I mean, some of them you could consider vintage because there's uh, episode one stuff in there and then the, so that's 1999 and then from like the early 2000s and stuff so the prequels but I mean for Star Wars collectors that's not really considered vintage um, but I like those I just am not really in the market for picking up carded stuff but like if they're like cheap enough I could open them up so I um, was even talking to him he then told me that yeah he uh, was a collector uh, but he had to make room because his collection room would now uh, transform into his, you know, uh, nursery, the children's room for his newborn girl. So he had to make a lot of room and uh, wanted to sell a lot of his stuff. He told me the more rarer items he sold online, but more of the more common stuff he brought to this flea market and he plans to go to other flea markets. So, I mean, talking to him, I already could kind of get the feeling that he would not charge like too much for these carded uh, figures so I mean a couple of them are like right up my alley some of these you know to um, like uh, you know prequel characters the weird ones the pot racers stuff like that um, so I like I was talking to him and like grabbing through them this was another one that I was interested in um, yeah, he told me he bought them once, like new, when they were in the store. So he was probably collecting since quite some time. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, they're not, not, they're still not worth a lot. These are really, like, I mean, in Germany it's still not as cheap as in the U.S. But in the U.S., these carded figures, like on card, mostly go for around five dollars. And um, it would, I would also not really pay a lot more for them. Um, but as I had pulled together another pile of like loose figures, some of these trolls, and I was interested in some of these uh, carded figure, uh, yeah, carded Star Wars figures, we um, made a nice bundle deal. So, I mean, it kind of still paid off to go to this uh, flea market. <laughs> Yeah, and this guy had some action figures, some Pokemon plush, some older things. And that was the only like like seller that I picked something up. Let's start with the Pokemon. Um, he had this full um, like box of Pokemon plushies and there was also some bigger ones, etc. But the only Pokemon plushies I'm interested in is are, are these, the small size ones that are originally from when Pokemon first launched, like in 90, I think they, if they have a tag, this one, the, the Onyx still has a tag, I think it always says 1998 on it. Let me check again. 96, 98, yeah, it says 98. So they were definitely out in 1999 when I was freshly into Pokemon. I was so much into it like um, at that point. I was like the first generation of Pokemon fans so and obviously the games. The, I, I, I played the, the red edition so so much back then um, but with my, my with my pocket money you know I went to uh, our local toy store always and bought these small toys these small plushies they were out at that point and whenever I come across more of them now I kind of pick them up I don't have them displayed but I all I have all of my original ones from childhood still uh, and then now I'm just adding other Pokemon. So here we've got Onyx. This is like, this is so stupid. Uh, because this one is like a ginormous stone snake. Like one of the biggest Pokemon. And here we have it as this tiny plush. But this is so hilarious, but it's fun. Um, this one I never knew uh, was released as this plushie back then. So that's very cool. Pick that one up. Here we've got... Um, in German it's called Pipi. -pee. I think in English it's Clefairy, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I had um, 
uh, Jigglypuff as a child, but I never saw uh, this one uh, in my local toy store. So now I have PP or yeah, um, Clefairy. Super cute. And I also picked up Raichu. I also never knew that that one was existing because I had a Pikachu, but for some of them they even made the evolution. So here we also have Raichu. Super cute. They all have, you know, beans inside, so they sit really nice. And um, I'm really happy with these. So, um, by the way, from this vendor, I like bundled everything together. So I cannot exactly tell you how much these were. He started with them with like five euro per Pokemon, which is definitely not what I paid in the end, which is a little more than I would like to pay for them. But then I bundled in some um, Star Wars figures, some loose ones here. Um, all clone troopers, all from the Clone Wars series. So they are all from nine, 2008 up until I think 2012. Um, two of them, so the orange ones here, are both the same character. It's both Commander Cody. Um, and this one is a generic phase two um, clone trooper. These are not stormtroopers, these are clone troopers. That's a difference. I'm sorry, but I really, really love clone troopers. So they are from, you know, the. Um, you know, the 90s and 2000s movies, you could say, from the prequels. Um, not 90s, because like they, they appeared in episode two for the very first time, and that's in 2002. Um, but yeah, and then um, I got heavily into Star Wars through uh, the animated series, The Clone Wars, and there's tons of clone troopers in there. They're the good guys. Um, and every one of them has a, like, even has a, although they, they seem to be cloned, you know, they are clones, but everyone has a, has their own personality and quirks and uh, Commander Cody is actually the guy that um, is in the uh, always together with um, Obi-Wan Kenobi if you're wondering so with these ones they're just two different releases you can remove the head of, of them and then they really have the face underneath so you can tell it's both Commander Cody it's the same guy <laughs> um, the other one does not have remo a removable helmet um, but yeah, it's just a generic phase two. By the way, phase one and phase two, <laughs> this is always phase one, like from episode two when they have these straight lines, but when they start to look a little more like stormtroopers, like this, when the eyes get a little more like droopy here, and I mean eyes, it's a helmet obviously, but um, so this is what a phase two helmet looks like. This is a phase one helmet, so. I know Star Wars is not really <laughs> a thing that most of you are interested in, but like, yeah. Uh, let's keep it going. Couple more uh, Star Wars things. This time carded, which I did actually not uh, think that I would pick any of those up when he showed them to me. It's like, I just wanna have a look because I usually don't like carded things. What should I do with carded things? But these are not super valuable or anything. I would just open them up. Then I have complete cool, Star Wars characters, and these are all characters that I've personally never come across. Here we got one from episode one. This is like the announcer guy from the pot race. His name is, or I mean, it's two guys, you know, it, it has two heads. <laughs> so it's Fode and Bead. And uh, you know, episode one, when the pot racing is taking place, all of those characters I really wanna have. They're all so funky and strange and, um, Although this is not from the episode one collection, it's the Power of the Jedi collection, which I think the episode one collection, that, that the cards look like this, uh, they are directly from 1999. And I think after that, it, it was called Power of the Jedi, which should be then like, whatever, 2000 or something. Uh, does it have a date? Yeah, 2000. And that one says 1999, so yeah, Power of the Jedi. Um, Let's keep it going with this because this is also one of the pod racers. This is directly a pod racer. Uh, you can see him in episode one, this guy. He's racing together with Anakin and Sebulba, but at one point he has to, you know, he has to stop and I don't know, refuel or something. And um, it goes horribly wrong because one of his pit droids or <laughs> one of his droids is like flying into one of his engines and it just explodes. So not a really um, <laughs> important character. One of the, you know, comedy relief characters just from the pot race. Oh my goodness, this looks pretty dusty. Um, so his name is 
Odie Mandrell oder Odie Mandrell, uh, just a funny character. And as I said, I want to have all of the cool uh, pod racing characters, definitely from episode one. And then this one is uh, one of the more important characters, though he has not really a lot of screen time. This is Mars Ameda. Uh, you can definitely see him always in the Senate. I think in all three of the prequel episodes, episode one, two, and three, he is always like kind of an advisor or a very high pol politician uh, together with a chancellor. So at first uh, next to Valorum and then also when Palpatine gets uh, chancellor, um, he is still uh, his, oh, well, me and pol politicians, um, vice chair. He's the vice chair of the chancellor. So a very cool alien look to him. And he even stays relevant throughout the Empire, you know, when Palpatine gets the Emperor and that then, then this guy here is actually a, gra a Grand Vizier. I don't know how you call that in German. I say Großvizier, Grand Vizier, Grand Vizier, Vizier, Grand Vizier, whatever. I'm an, uh, a very high politician, not one of the good guys. So uh, definitely will unpack all of them. As I said, none of these, um, like from, from this era, they were produced like heavily. They, they are not rare or anything and you can come across them loose or on card for really cheap. Um, some people, especially here, think that it, just because it's Star Wars, it's worth a lot, no matter what what generation of Star Wars. But like, to be quite honest, these are, these are a dime a dozen actually. So I'm very happy that he sold them to me in the end for, I think, at first he wanted 10 per pack like per per card but i got it at least for five um per card right now and i also picked up two little trolls from him which is also something that i usually do not um pick up but this one kind of caught my interest i think i have seen one of those before and left him uh those have kind of a um, marking on them that says tnt 1992 made in china and I just remembered that um, I had talked to somebody and I couldn't remember to whom, but I think it must have been Cotton Candy Kittens, um, that uh, when I said, told her that I had seen one of them and she was like, oh, these are actually a little more um, thought after, people like them. And she, she told me why and now I see why, because um, a, I think they they are more more a European thing. I don't know what company this is TNT. I couldn't really find out, uh, but they are available. Uh, they are kind of you know baby trolls, <laughs> uh, available in the sitting pose with a um, bottle. Another sitting troll that has a little I don't know a, a towel or something over his arm, and another standing baby troll with an even littler baby troll in his arm. So three molds, and then in three hair colors. And all of them very pastel. So here we've got the pastel yellow. I think there's a pastel turquoise, aqua blue, and a pastel pink. So when you have all of them in these different um, colors and the different um, you know, molds, it actually looks very cute. So this time I picked it up. It's nice. Um, this one I just, for the heck of it, also took because I thought, okay, maybe it's also one of them. Um, but this is actually a bendable troll, so like a bendy, so you know you can actually whatever do with the feet, etc. and it will stay. So that's interesting. This guy has a basketball. It looks definitely very 90s. Just the face uh, throws me off a little more. I mean, every troll face kind of throws me off. <laughs> but this one even more because this one still has the correct, you know, way the glass insert eyes. This one just has you know, painted eyes and they look a little strange to me. This one looks better, I guess, but still, uh, I had never seen one of them. I have tried to find out. I've also found this one online, but not under a specific name because this one does not have any markings, just someone trying to sell it online. <laughs> That's all I found. Um, I don't know, I kind of like them. I'm not never really the biggest fan of trolls, but, but you saw as when I am at the flea market and there's like nothing really to be found at this other than this one vendor okay he had star wars cool but then i just took also the other stuff from him so the pokemon these and you know uh, i probably would have not picked them up i mean this one now i'm trying to keep my eyes open for the other ones because if you at least have three of them in the three hair colors or something it's kind of cute and i mean it's prime 90s era it's like 1992 so 
and I guess this one too. Um, the other guy actually told me he <laughs> has sorted out his, he was probably also a toy collector, specifically I think a Star Wars collector. Uh, he has had to sort out his collection because he has to make space uh, for his newborn baby that will get the room that he used as a collector room now so but it seems he mainly had Star Wars um, I, I asked him what other toy lines he had and he said something from like superheroes or so but like uh, I doubt that he had a lot of other stuff that I would have been interesting interested in I think I asked him for turtles and he said no so yeah um, that's actually it that I wanted to show you on this video. So here and there are little cute things. But not the biggest haul in the world. So uh, I hope you still enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, don't forget uh, to give a thumbs up to this video. You can comment down below. Please don't be mad if I'm not commenting back all the time. Um, it's just very hard for me, uh, especially also when you're than writing like private messages, not on YouTube because it's not possible on YouTube, but on Instagram, uh, there's no way I can answer all of your private messages. I'm, I'm so sorry, <laughs> uh, but I'm always happy. I'm, I'm more happy to read a comment than a private message, to be quite honest. That's, uh, I just wanted to say that to you, unless this is something very, I don't know, private, but still it takes a lot of time out of my day and a lot of, it's very stressful for me to answer private messages. Let's just stay it like this, so. Anyways, like don't don't leave it at a negative note here. <laughs> uh, so you also don't have to comment, obviously. But comments uh, are very much welcome uh, under my videos. So thank you so much for watching. See you real soon, and may the toys be with you. Bye.